Hello everyone. Today's story comes from Reddit user SawVids. I decided to look at the dreams I forget when I wake up. So, for the last few weeks or so I've been stuck with these troubling events just circling in my head over and over. I wasn't really sure where, if anywhere, I could share this information but I've decided that here would be my best choice. I suppose there's at least some level of anonymity here. I'll begin with some context. I'm 15 years old and the son of a very wealthy CEO of an organization that has the main priority to use technology to advance humanity. I won't be giving any more specifics as I would very much like to keep this relatively low profile. I don't believe my father would be happy with me sharing this experience, but it's starting to eat me up inside and I don't believe I can just keep it to myself. About three weeks ago, my father and I were having a discussion about dreams. I can't remember exactly what brought it on, as it was one of those spur of the moment things to speak about. I don't often get to spend a lot of time with him, so I just try to make the most out of my conversations with him, and that means sharing what's on my mind. Apparently, the subject of dreams is a personal interest of my father's. He seemed to light up upon the conversation beginning and shared with me an interesting piece of information. Humans have about three to five dreams per night. Strange, right? I'm hard pressed to remember one of my dreams, so the possibility that we may have five separate dreams in one night is bizarre to me. When he mentioned this though, it seemed to have some sort of purpose, because the friendly discussion quickly turned into what felt like an advertisement. He was suddenly explaining to me how his company was attempting to harness the power of creativity that's expressed via dreams. Supposedly, what happens within our dreams are the pinnacle of our imagination, according to him. He eventually proposed a question to me. He asked me if I'd like to be the first person to trial their new creation. Before I give a brief explanation of this, I have to stress, a lot of the details are highly classified. I can only hope nobody with ties to my father comes across this, but I won't bite my tongue. Instead, I'll try to lessen the collateral damage in case that does happen. Plus, if I'm honest, I don't really know exactly how it works myself. Basically, the device has the ability to monitor your brain during sleep and create a recreation of the dreams that you've had. It's pretty amazing from a technological standpoint. My father reassured me that it was safe, and there had been previously animal tests where the animals were completely unharmed. This did, to an extent, put me at ease, so I agreed, much to his joy. It was the following night when the experiment actually begun. As everything had to be prepared first, the machines they dragged into my bedroom must have had collective weight of well over a few hundred kilograms. It was much like the old photos of the original computers and how big and bulky everything was in order for it to run properly. I'm not sure just how difficult this is to do, but the amount of processing power the machines had is likely incomprehensibly high. I was hooked up to the machine rather quickly, which was not really a pleasant ordeal. I ended up looking more like machine than man, with wires and cables trailing off me from every limb. Of course, there's no way I'd sleep like that, so I agreed, reluctantly mind you, to be sedated. It was a rather pleasant sleep, to be honest. I didn't remember any of the dreams I'd had, which was quite common, but now I had a machine to look back over them with. I wasn't quite sure how this was going to go. The scientists or researchers or whatever the correct term may be, they disconnected me fully from the machine with a few minutes or so and prepared for playback. So, in my own bedroom, surrounded by employees of my father, the majority of which I'd never met before, we watched the dreams I'd had that night and there was nothing really out of the ordinary. The dreams were bizarre, but all dreams are. It was certainly strange though, looking at a screen and seeing my own dream play out like a movie. It sent chills down my spine for some time. It 
just felt unnatural. Like I was looking upon something forbidden. So, with that night of monitoring complete, I was thanked and promptly abandoned in my room. This was how things continued for a week. There were no notable events or occurrings within my dreams, but the scientists were all very eager to study the results and what exactly happened during the dreams. It was interesting, getting to see what my own dreams looked like, but I just couldn't shake an uneasy feeling. And after a week had passed, it turned to one of dread. On night eight of the experiment, everything went as usual. It was upon reviewing the footage that everything took a turn for the worse. It was the third dream, and I remember viewing it vividly, as if I'd done it earlier today. The dream was about myself and a few friends spending time together at an amusement park. However, on all the rides there were no handlebars or protections whatsoever, so some people would randomly go flying off the rides and others would remain on by pure chance it seemed. This sounds odd, but it was really nothing special. What was the most horrifying part was the figure in the background. During the entire footage, there was the same man in the background. An indistinguishable face, seemingly blurred. Black shirt, black trousers and black shoes. The only defining feature were his eyes, locked directly on the point where we are viewing from all the time. They looked like black, soulless voids. Nobody really noticed him until a few minutes in, and one of the female scientists said something along the lines of, I can't shake the feeling that guy's staring at the screen. That was all it took, an immediate cut to black, which was met by panic from every single one of the researchers. They scrambled to recover the footage, but this was apparently the footage. The cut to black should have happened in my dream. After about 20 eternal seconds of waiting, there was something on the screen again. That same man. And this time, he was the only thing on the screen. Dimly lit, but light enough so he was clearly visible. And he just stood there, shaking his head left to right. A dead silence fell over the room. Colour seemed to have drained from every single one of the researchers' faces. A look of... realisation, maybe? They quickly switched to the next dream. No use. It was the same man, ominously stood there and shaking his head in almost a threatening way. They switched back to the first and the second dream of the night and that's where my blood really ran cold. Gone. The only footage was of the same man. In fact, all the footage they'd taken over the past week was completely and utterly corrupted by that man. The researchers packed up all the equipment and left the room without so much as an explanation to me. I've tried speaking to my father about it, but he always says, we'll talk later. Over the past two weeks though, I've been remembering my dreams more frequently, and I wish I wasn't. The majority of the time it's just that same man. I don't know who he is. I don't recognise him. I can't even comprehend why I would be dreaming of him. And recently he's adopted a new trait. A smile. A grin. A smirk. One that I do not even like to think about. And on the occasion my dream doesn't entail this, I believe it's still him. I'm not proud to admit it, but... The other day I actually ended up shedding a few tears over the incident. Before I went to bed I just remember asking, Why? Why are you always there? Into my pillow. And then the dream for that night was different. It was just pure darkness. And yet I could feel somebody there with me. I was met with taunting whispers. and things in a similar vein to that. I don't know what to do, I've not slept for the past two days and I'm trying to remain dosed up on caffeine to stay awake. I wouldn't admit this in person, but I'm terrified. I'm desperate. 
I just want rid of this thing. I don't know what it is. I've, I've tried apologizing, begging, pleading, everything. It just seems to fall on deaf ears. Whatever this is and whoever this man is, I don't really care. I just want my dreams back. Even if I don't remember them or even if some sort of creativity is wasted. I'm scared. So I'll turn to you because my father's being dismissive and I haven't seen my mother in years but I doubt she'd care wherever she is. So please, I need some sort of advice. I understand that I seem insane and you can call me insane if you wish but I just want help.